What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Forza Horizon 5 with Brogue Hammer Auto House. Today, we are going to be focused on some tips and tricks to help you guys drift like a pro in Forza Horizon 5. Um, I've gotten my fair share of drifting in now and built a couple cars that have performed pretty well. So I wanted to go through and kind of explain, you know, throttle control, what certain throttle inputs are going to do to the car and as well as braking, uh, you know, handbrake, foot brake, what they're going to do and how they're going to set your car up uh, for the right corners and, and how to kind of basically make the car perform at its best ability. So um, I'm going to throw myself up in the corner. We'll jump into it here and show you guys kind of what I've been doing and what's been helping uh, with playing the game. So um, here you can see I've got a little Adam LZ type S15 from Formula Drift. They didn't have the wide body kit or anything that he does have on his car, so it looks a little different. You know, the rear spoiler's not there. Um, the front bumper is a little different because he doesn't have the Yashio factory kit. But um, I did put a 3.2 liter stroker motor in this. It's an engine swap you can do on these cars. Uh, I'm not sure if it's considered like an RB or a JZ. They don't really say. Um, but I'm assuming it's a Jay-Z, so we're just going to roll with it like that. Um, we're going to start off with this first drift zone here and hit a couple zones, and I'm going to show you guys first it's going to be throttle control. So I'm going to try to run the outside edge of every corner as far as possible, and you'll see that when I pour more throttle on, the car is going to go a little deeper into the corner, and as I let off throttle, or if I'm going too deep into the corner, I will let off throttle. It'll bring me to the inside just a little bit more and uh, help grip it up a little bit. So... We'll jump out here and hit this zone. I'm gonna flick it in, stick to the outside here. You can see it's gonna be red, so I handbrake and turn in. Didn't do a very good job to that outside zone, but got out here, just letting off throttle because I was drifting a little too wide. Again, too wide, so I'm letting off throttle to let the car grip up so it doesn't go too wide. Little adjustment there. This is not a very smooth line, I will admit, but. Um, we'll kind of manji this a little bit, and then we'll try to hit this outside zone. More throttle gets me out wider, adds some more angle. And again, this is just kind of a tip for getting to the outside of the zone, and then we'll eventually get to linking this entire track with more speed. Um, so you can see I'm handbraking to kind of reset the car. And if I'm on the inside of the corner, I'm steering towards the outside to make sure that I get some more speed and get to the outer edge um, whereas steering wise if you're drifting too wide and you want to bring it in you're gonna actually steer in to the inside of the corner a little more and that'll add angle to the car slow it down a little bit and help bring it in um, when you're handbraking on the outsides you want to flick to the outside handbrake to kind of settle the car in and then you can jam the throttle and since uh, in manual mode on controller since it's pretty difficult to use clutch I'm just in manual mode not manual with clutch um, we will kind of use the handbrake more or less as a clutch. So even when I'm in a certain gear and I need to kind of make a, a kick adjustment, um, I'm going to use the handbrake. Um, so we'll go through here one more time here, we'll do steering. We'll go run it kind of reverse to what we did before and try to maintain more of a linking effort here. I flicked it in way too early there. Handbrake, flicked it to the outside, adding throttle, getting too deep, letting off throttle a little bit. I let totally off throttle because I knew I was going to go way too wide. Flicking it back, try to link this corner, steering to the outside because I need less angle and to get further out. And then here you can see I'm going to go really low angle handbrake because it's red. And then kind of work my way back into throttle to maintain around this corner. And you can hear me modulating the throttle to maintain control so I don't spin out. And so that I can kind of keep the car where I want it to be in the corner. And you can see we got 157,000 drift points there. So we're going to kind of keep trying to improve on this one spot here real quick. And I will switch up some cars as well. And I'm going to show you kind of how I have my controls set up um, a little later in the video also. Um, so like I said, the handbrake I'm using as a clutch. So that's something to kind of let you reset and settle down in the car. And then hit the throttle to kind of maintain that line that you're working on. Um, so the more throttle that you give it, the wider it's going to drift to the outside. Um, and you'll see when I completely let off throttle, that's because uh, I'm going way too wide and I need the car to grip up and stay on the road. So 
we'll go through one more time here and try to link this whole entire drift section, see if we can best that score. So I'm going to kind of flick it in. Pretty shallow corner here, and then a handbrake transition to make sure that we don't go too wide on that. Modulating throttle, flooring it out of the corner. We'll get to the outside again, full throttle. Got a little bit into the dirt, but I want to try to get to that inside clip. And then here's a really long straight, so it's going to be hard to kind of connect it, but we'll do our best. Too much, so I let way off throttle because I was going a little too wide on that corner. We'll upgrade. Oh, boy. See, I was on too much throttle and didn't have enough control and just went straight off track. So that is not what you want to be doing, but um, I thought that would kind of be an interesting way to show you guys what might happen if you mash too much throttle. And obviously the gearing is important. And people always ask me, how do you know which gear to switch into at what time? And my go-to is if I'm riding limiter and the car starts to lose angle, that means you don't have enough wheel speed to maintain the drift line that you're going for. And you need to upshift to get to the next gear to make sure you have enough wheel speed to keep the car in drift. Um, if you're maxing out a gear, um, for example, I'll show you here, if I stay in third gear and try to drift through this drift zone because it's such a low gear, I'll flick it in and I'm on full throttle, but like the car's going to the inside and I don't have enough wheel speed to keep that drift going to the outside. So if I do the same thing and let's say I'm in third gear coming into this corner and I don't have the speed, I need to shift to fourth. Oh, that was not a good example. Third gear, we'll do it again here, floored. And this is a sharp corner, so we'll stay in third. But then here, we'll start to lose drift if we don't have enough wheel speed. So you can go to fourth, get that wheel speed going, flick it to the outside, and then kind of modulate that throttle to keep it in the zone as best you can. Here, I'm gonna shift up to fifth because we're going for a longer, more straight drift. And um, that kind of helps you. So we're gonna do a little freestyle in here, show you and kind of listen to the engine and what it's doing and what gears I'm in because the more throttle you add, the more angle you're gonna get and the less throttle you add, obviously the less angle, um, as well as the way I'm steering is going to the outside. I know that might be confusing. It's a lot of information really fast. Um, we're gonna take a quick break here and show you my controls that I'm using. So you guys can use those if you want to have a similar setup and then um, We'll jump back and do a couple more tips and tricks on the drifting stuff here. Okay, so let's jump into the settings that I'm using on the Xbox controller, as you can see here that I'm using. Um, we'll go into the settings here on the main menu. And we're going to go to controls. Um, I did change my input mapping to have um, A, my A, which is my bottom button, is going to be my handbrake. And then I use B to upshift and X to downshift. Um, those are the only controls that I changed on here um, in the controller layout. When we go to advanced controls, um, we want the shift up down to be off. Um, it, it switches so that it would reverse your controls. So X would be shift up, B would be shift down. We don't want that. So all those are going to be off. Um, and then I think the only other thing I changed is the deceleration axis dead zone outside. And that's so that when I'm using a foot brake or a left hand, you know, with my left finger on foot braking while drifting, um, there's a little bit more of a dead zone there so that uh, it doesn't just hit full brakes immediately upon hitting that brake. So as far as the difficulty settings go um, and what I use, um, I do have it at Drive Atar difficulty highly skilled. I'm just going to make a big adjustment in the bottom right. You'll see plus 75% uh, payout basically on your racing and everything like that. Um, and that's because I have this at highly skilled and then my custom settings as well. So I have the anti-lock braking off. Um, this is something I could turn on again, but for drifting, you really don't want anti-lock brakes. Um, for that sake, I'm just going to keep it off. Standard steering, so nothing different there. That's going to be how it's set up to begin with for the game. And then traction control and stability control I have off and I have shifting in manual mode. Now I wish they did have a manual with clutch mode that was manual sequential with clutch. So you could use basically like normal manual mode shifting through gears without using the clutch, but that the clutch would be available to you uh, if you wanted to like clutch kick through a corner 
Um, maybe it's something they'll add at some point. You know, I know Car Extra Racing has it, and I really enjoy that. Um, but Forza, Forza doesn't have it, and that's why I tend to use the handbrake for the clutch because I'm in manual, which is essentially sequential mode. I do have the driving uh, line at braking only so that I can see kind of when I'm coming up to the corners. If it's red, obviously, I need to slow down. And then damage and tire wear I have on cosmetic. You can either turn that off or have it all be on simulation, which would like truly damage your car and make it difficult to you know, finish a race if you get into a big crash or something like that. I have rewind off. Um, that's just a personal preference. It does give you, uh, it actually doesn't affect your payout. So if you want that on, it's, it's a good thing to have uh, for the more beginner racers here. If you're in the middle of a race and you go off track or you hit somebody and spin out and you fall way behind, you can just use the rewind button to back up and resume from the time before you crash. So you can like basically try the corner again um, so that's something that, you know, if you're a beginner or you just like to have that option so you don't have to restart a whole race because you messed up, then turn rewind on and uh, it's not going to hurt your payout or anything. So that's it for uh, the difficulty settings. When you go to HUD, the heads up display and gameplay, we want the camera view to be, I use chase near. Um, we're going to leave all those requests on and then down here you'll see cockpit drift camera is an option in the gameplay. And now this is really fun and I'll show you what it's gonna do in a second, but when you turn this on, it's gonna be off standard no matter what. Uh, when you go to the first person view of the car and you're drifting, um, it'll actually kind of move the camera so that you can see what's ahead of you, like if you're in drift. Um, and that's the only option that I changed in here. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick what that looks like because it is a big, it makes a big difference when you're drifting. So you can see here, once I get into a drift corner, the camera will kind of turn and let me see through the left window a little bit. And then when I turn this way, it kind of shows me out the right so that I can see what's ahead of me. This is gonna be really helpful for when we do tandems, when we're chasing people. And without that, you know, the, the camera stays looking straight forward and that can be really challenging to drift. Now you gotta get used to the steering a little bit more with this camera. Um, but overall, it, it really helps, uh, and I highly suggest you use that if you aren't already using it. I'm not used to these corners because I haven't driven this road a whole lot, but um, that gave you kind of a good idea of what that display looks like. And obviously, if you guys have questions or want to see certain videos about a certain particular way that you drift or, or what you you know aren't sure about, leave a comment below, and I'm happy to answer those. And uh, look at maybe making some videos for you guys that are more deeper instructional on this. Um, I'm going to be making a tandem video later on, but I haven't been doing really many tandems in this because I haven't been uh, matching up with friends online. So uh, if you guys do want to play online with me and get together and throw up a tandem lobby, I think that'd be a lot of fun. Um, so leave a comment below and we can certainly look into doing something like that in the near future here. Um, but otherwise, that's going to do it for the tips and tricks video. I know it was really quick. I ran through a lot of different things um, very quickly. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for next time. Put your life in drive. We will see you later.